let me say this right now. This Webio is a very ambitious project. It is definitely one of my most ambitious besides obviously my transatlantic and transpacific vacuum tubes. It is a new tunnel under the Hudson Bay and this is a long tunnel too, 5.5 kilometers long. Yes, I know it's quite long and it also involves widening to other roads in the local area to support the additional traffic that this tunnel would bring. However, I'm going to go through a quick story on why this is needed. Now, before I do that, let's just get into a summary of the area. This is New York City, population of around 8 million. This is New Jersey, population of 8 million. Now, I know part of New York City is on Long Island, but for practical purposes, all of Long Island, including Queens and Kings County, has a population of around, you guessed it, 8 million. So, while there are many connections between New York City and Long Island, Connecticut and Bronx County to Long Island, Staten Island to Long Island, there are no direct connections, believe it or not, between New Jersey, a state of 8 million, and Long Island, an island of 8 million. There's a lot of commuting and also just recreational travel that occurs between these two places. And many people in New Jersey will find the Long Island beaches to be equally good as the New Jersey beaches as they would even in the end decongest the Garden State Parkway by using this. However, if they use these beaches or if they work in Long Island, if there's a lot of transportation between New Jersey and Long Island, how do they travel in between the two places? Well, if you're coming from the south, for example, Philadelphia or further southwest, you would take the Staten Island Expressway across Staten Island. Staten Island, believe it or not, is in the state of New York. I actually thought it was in New Jersey until I was like seven or eight, but it's in New York State. And then they cross Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which is a 12-lane double-decker bridge that crosses a lower Hudson Bay and then they would continue on to their destinations in southern Long Island which include Levittown, the biggest suburbia in America. Well, the problem is that the Verrazano Bridge is extremely crowded even for 12 lanes. It has not been, not really widened per se, but added lanes since 1968. So that's not really a viable option if you want to get there quickly. Now, if you're going to Northern Long Island, how do you go there? Well, you would take the New Jersey Turnpike all the way up towards the George Washington Bridge, cross through Upper Manhattan, and go on the Cross Bronx Expressway. All of this here is ridiculously choked. It would probably take you an hour to get from the Interstate 80 interchange to the interchange with 278, 678, and 495, not 495, 295. But this would take an hour, it's barely like six or seven miles. And then you could go on the Throg's Neck Bridge, which I actually proposed a second span on a couple webios back. And then this would take you to, towards Northern Long Island. If you're going to Central Long Island, most people would still take the GW Bridge if they're going to the more easternly parts, for example, Nassau and Suffolk County. However, if they're going to Queens, especially Western Queens, they would try to go on the Lincoln Tunnel and cross through Manhattan and go on the Queens Midtown Tunnel both of those tunnels are ridiculously choked. So what I'm trying to say is all the crossings of the Hudson River are very old and very overclocked. So I was proposing why not directly connect New Jersey with Long Island? This segment here if it's constructed would remove a lot of traffic coming from western and southern New Jersey towards Long Island as they won't have to go through all these other weaving and going up and down through all these different roads. This connects directly with Interstate 278, which connects to many of the main east-west corridors of Queens and Nassau, Suffolk County and the rest of Long Island. Also, if they want to go to the Bronx, they can actually do this and avoid the terror that is the Cross Bronx Expressway and continue on to Connecticut. So in a way, this will relieve traffic from the New Jersey Turnpike as well. Now, before I get into this, if you have not already noticed, the roads are pretty dense here. So I'm going to do something right now. I'm going to remove the road layer so that doesn't interrupt with 
the clarity of this web view and I'm going to do that right now. That looks a lot cleaner, right? Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into the actual web view itself. Now, I'm not going to the tunnel first because I'm going to show you what has to be done before such a tunnel is ever constructed. And that is widening the existing overcrowded roads that this tunnel will connect. Now, Interstate 278 right here is an elevated highway and it is ridiculously overchoked already. It is six lanes elevated. So what I was proposing is not proposing to a girl if you're wondering that. I'm not proposing to anybody right now. I'm actually proposing to an interstate rather and proposing to a city that this would become a double deck with the westbound or in this case southbound lanes being on the upper deck. The reason I chose the southbound is that the interchange with the Belt Parkway has west or southbound going on the upper deck in the flying junction with the Belt Parkway so I decided just continue that along the entire segment up to Route 27. Now with Route 27, I didn't want to leave it here. There's another bridge here connecting to Interstate 478 which goes to the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. So I wanted to widen this here which is already 8 lanes. I'm going to widen it to 12 lanes. So in essence it's going to be 12 lanes here and 12 lanes here and that 6 westbound or southbound lanes are going to be stacked on top of 6 north or eastbound lanes here. So that's the widening that, that has to be done with Interstate 278 and I think that has to come first too because if the tunnel is complete before this is done it'll just make the problems much worse and not to mention there's already a bit of traffic along the Interstate 278 corridor so in effect it'll be indirectly benefiting them per se and yeah so this has to be widened at least up to the junction with Interstate 478 which goes through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. Now if you see this right here, you see I-78, I-278 interchange. Now let me zoom out and tell you what this means. Interstate 78 technically ends right here at the junction of Route 1 and 9 and New Jersey 139 in New Jersey, Jersey City. However, all of Interstate 78's auxiliary routes go on into New York City and they are all interconnected together. 278, 478 and 678 are all interconnected together. But none connect to its parent route, Interstate 78. This was due to the fact that Interstate 78 was actually supposed to continue through a tunnel through Midtown Manhattan and connect to either Brooklyn or Queens like that. But that never happened. And now all the parent routes, not parent routes, the parent route is separate from all the child routes right here. So all this new segment right here, this new tunnel from here, which is where it leaves Interstate 78 towards Interstate 278, this will become Interstate 78. And the existing part of the New Jersey Turnpike Jersey City Extension, also known as the existing Interstate 78, will become Interstate 578. Now why 5? I generally use even numbers when naming new auxiliary interstates, but this is more of a spur. I call this a Jersey City Spur because it does not connect directly to any existing interstate or highway for that matter, so this is a spur going to Lower Manhattan. The main Interstate 78 will continue along into Brooklyn, like this. So with that out of the way, these flyovers, and by the way, both of the double decks would be on a flyover above the existing road, but these would connect through what is essentially a directional T interchange just elevated. This building here will have to be destroyed. This is one of the few web views that buildings will have to be destroyed, but I think the overall benefits will outweigh the costs. It will go through what is an abandoned navy yard and turn here. There is no toll gantry here that will be on the New Jersey side and then it will enter. This is six lanes entering the tunnel and this is a 5.5 kilometer long tunnel. I'm going to kind of break the rules now and speed faster than what I plan the speed limit to be of 45 miles per hour but anyways that brings us 
to the toll gantry. Now if you have seen my other web views, specifically the Interstate 19 Massachusetts, I made an entire web view of just making the highway electronic tolls. I believe electronic tolls are the future as in the good amount of people already use easy pass or other similar systems i believe florida uses sun pass california uses something else and massachusetts uses citizens bank fast pass or something like that but what i'm trying to say is there are always those few slow pokes who don't have these prepaid electronic toll units that go on their dashboard so i'm just making an electric toll gantry right here that allow full speed travel between through this so that when the ticket is made for the toll it will be mailed. I believe that the price of this tunnel should be around 14 to 15 dollars which is similar to other crossings. I know it's expensive but when the other crossings across the Hudson are a similar price you would bet that Port Authority would probably instate a high price on this crossing as well. So you may be like, that's the end of the web, yo. No, it is not. What do we do on the west side or the New Jersey side? That's even more complicated than what we did on the New York side. So this will go onto a viaduct over the railway yard. So these railway yards should be unaffected. Now this is northbound three lanes, not northbound, westbound three lanes. This is eastbound three lanes. I know it goes like northwest, southeast. Now what happens here, and this may take a couple minutes to explain, this is the existing Interstate 78. What I'm planning to do is this is a four lane highway. I'm going to make the two westbound lanes go on along this right here and connect with the three, three new lanes coming from the tunnel and go like that and they will create its own carriageway. Interstate 78 will have separate carriageways and the existing carriageway will only be used for eastbound traffic like this. Some of it will go on to the existing alignment which will soon become Interstate 578. The rest will continue on to the new flyover here that will go along into the tunnel and into Brooklyn and Long Island. Next I have to explain this green thing. So this green indicates that there's still one westbound lane that connects to New Jersey Route 440 because otherwise this connection would be lost and this is actually a pretty heavily used connection so I believe that it would not be worth to remove it. So it will be one westbound here, five eastbound. It would be kind of weird but you get the point. So five westbound, five eastbound, they split into six lanes here, four lanes here. And then coming from New Jersey 440 North to 78 West, this would be destroyed and it would connect to the new segment. Now I do think that 440 could be relocated slightly more to the north. I didn't actually draw it out now, but I do think that has to happen to allow 10 lanes or 5 new lanes north of the existing lanes be constructed. Next is the second span of the Newark Bay Bridge. The second span. Now this is kind of reminiscent of the Gothel's bridge. They're actually replacing the entire bridge here. But if you remember my second web view actually which was the Interstate 276 and 95 interchange, I proposed a second span of the Delaware River crossing because otherwise it would be too choked with the existing bridge. This is a similar idea right here. The existing bridge has four lanes and two outer shoulders. With a new proposal, this bridge would be the eastbound lanes only, having five lanes and one outer shoulder on the right side. The new bridge would also be a similar design, not design per se, but it would be a similar layout. Obviously, it will be a much newer design. The existing bridge is built in the 1950s, so it's getting pretty old. And I do think that making this a 10 lane total bridge is vital to serve this new tunnel efficiently without making all the traffic slow here because otherwise it would be like one bottleneck. I see transportation almost as like a mathematical function and if you have not noticed, not noticed, but if you have not known by now, I'm actually majoring in college in mathematics. But anyways, many functions are like the slowest rate, that's also chemistry really, but the slowest rate is what determines everything. So 
whatever, wherever the traffic is slowest, that will determine how well everything is used. This is a big six lane tunnel, I want it to be used to its max efficiency and preferably the tunnels are where the minimum rate should be had, not the bridge. Because if the bridge is holding up all traffic, no one be using the tunnel in the first place. So that's why I'm widening everything and building new spans. So the second new span will be built directly north of the existing span and it will connect to Interstate 78 and Interstate 95 right here. And I do think the existing alignment here is wide enough so that nothing new has to be constructed here as some new traffic will be coming from Interstate 95 directly and there's enough width right here. The rest will go underneath like this into Interstate 95 South where they'll go on to Philadelphia and beyond. Interstate 78 goes on West New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So that's about it of this webview. I know it was quite a bit to do. It was kind of reminiscent of my Hudson rail tunnel connection. If I, if you remember that, I made a tunnel connecting Grand Central, passing Hoboken towards the new, like the northern New Jersey lines. This is kind of like that, but the tunnel itself is really long. But like that, there are other additions that need to be done to the tunnel itself. I would never make a webby of a single tunnel because that's not that exciting. But And also, there's a lot of other stuff to consider when building something new. Everything you build will have repercussions on everything else in the area. This is why I widened everything. If you just build a new tunnel or a new bridge, but don't care about where they come from or where they go, it won't work that well. That's simple as that. So all this and this right here will have to be constructed and then the tunnel would be a later phase. I don't think this would be able to be built until at least 2040 but I think it will be built eventually and I hope that it's built because it will easily connect finally New Jersey with Long Island without a boat connection or going through another island like Manhattan or Staten and it will just increase the economies of both the regions. Thank you for watching and goodbye.